Back in the 1970s, there was a massive oil crisis, the effects of which were felt from Japan to the United States. US consumers were having to pay up to $4 a gallon, which at that point of time was unheard of. So the United States got into an agreement with Saudi Arabia, which is the world's largest producer of oil, that any sale of oil will be settled in dollars. No matter which country bought oil, whether it was America or China or India or Japan, they would all pay in dollars. This arrangement came to be called the petrodollars. Put simply, the petrodollar system is an exchange of oil for US dollars between countries that buy oil and those who produce it. For the last 50 years, this petrodollar system has been unchallenged. Until now, when Vladimir Putin decided to teach Ukraine a lesson. Putin knew that the invasion of Ukraine would be inevitably met with US and other Western countries throwing it out of the international banking system. That Russia and Russian companies will not be able to use the swift mode of banking transactions. So most Russian companies and the Russian economy as a consequence suffer because of it. But how does Russia respond to this? By shutting off oil and gas to Europe, and remember Europe needs 40% of its oil and gas from Russia, Russia also asks for transactions to be settled either in ruble or gold or any non-dollar asset. Now this, as expected, has caused massive price as well as supply disruptions to the Western markets. It is also a threat to the monetary system that's been in place for the last 50 plus years. On Crux Decode this week, how Vladimir Putin's mission in Ukraine puts an end to the petrodollar. For years now, Russia and China have looked to ways to re-monetize gold as well as be able to exit from SWIFT. They feel this just simply enables the dollar and in turn America, which is the producer of the dollar, to get more and more stronger. But here's the challenge for Russia. How do you exit from the system of petrodollars without the West calling it an act of war? Now this invasion in Ukraine has just accomplished that. And the West gave it to Putin on a platter. Now that Russia is mostly out of the SWIFT system, it is free to trade its oil with whoever is the highest bidder, and that too in a currency of its choosing. Russia can now say, well, we're going to turn our oil pipelines back on, but not for dollars, instead for rubles. Russia then declares that Europe or anybody who wants Russian oil, and remember, Russia is the third largest producer of oil and gas in the world, they must pay in ruble or any ruble-backed payment system. Similarly, it allows Russia to have ruble and yuan or ruble and rupee agreements without having to convert to dollars. Now, this leverage as the third biggest oil producer has caused immediate price shocks to the Western world. At the beginning of this year, oil was trading at just $75 a barrel. Today, it's gone up to $140 a barrel, doubling within just three months. But it's not just Russia or China. Today, even Saudi Arabia and the UAE are openly talking about selling their oil and settling in local currencies. Both Russia and Iran, for example, are offering countries like India and China oil at hugely discounted prices. And guess what? These countries are lapping it up. As the second and third biggest consumers of oil, China and India are licking their fingers at the prospect of buying oil at 25 to 30 percent discounts. And geopolitics is also keeping pace. This past week, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad visited the UAE and met with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed. This was the first visit by Assad to an Arab country since the civil war in his country began more than 10 years ago. One of Assad's biggest backers has been Vladimir Putin. Russia has been helping Assad's regime with airstrikes, which are critical in fighting the rebels in Syria. And now Bashar al-Assad is returning the favor by pleading on Putin's behalf to fellow Arab countries like UAE and Saudi Arabia. Now, these two countries, UAE and Saudi Arabia, have also given the cold shoulder to America, who happens to be their biggest ally for the last 50 years. 
both UAE and Saudi Arabia have refused to raise oil output. And it was not lost on Washington that both the leaders of Saudi Arabia and UAE avoided taking phone calls from US President Joe Biden. The UAE even abstained in the United Nations vote on Ukraine. Now, this threat to the petrodollar is no different from the time of Charles de Gaulle or Muammar Gaddafi or even Saddam Hussein, but on a much larger scale. America cannot hope to remove Vladimir Putin as easily as they did with these previous leaders who challenged the petrodollar system. Now, what are the consequences of the United States and the European Union kicking Russia off the SWIFT banking transaction system? Will it hurt the Russian economy? Well, certainly in the immediate term it will. But removing Russia from SWIFT could be exactly what Russia and China desire. And here's why. The SPFS, or the System for Transfer of Financial Messages, is a Russian equivalent of SWIFT. It has been developed by the Central Bank of Russia. The system has been in development since 2014, after the US government threatened to disconnect Russia from SWIFT. There are now plans to integrate the SPFS network with the China-based CIPS network, which is the cross-border interbank payment system. Now, can you imagine the effect of that? If Russia is removed from SWIFT, the blow to the US economy and more so to the economy of Europe would be enormous. The vast majority of SWIFT transactions are settled in US dollars, and that simply helps solidify the dollar as the global reserve currency. This gives the United States tremendous influence over the world economy, and therein lies the real power. If Russia and China come up with an alternative system to compete with SWIFT, that will be a competing currency system, and it will further weaken the US dollar. Not to mention, Russia is the second largest exporter of energy, and China is the largest manufactured goods exporter. They could also easily co-opt existing partners like the African countries and countries in Latin America, putting Europe and the United States on the back foot. Oil is the most traded commodity in the world, and it is settled in US dollars. For the last 50 years, this petrodollar system has seen the rise of powerful Middle Eastern countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Qatar. But now, if the world's largest exporter of oil, Russia, and the world's largest importer, China, come together, they don't need to settle in dollars. And this may just be the end of these multi-billion dollar petro-funded fiefdoms.